Hey, Jim Bergman here with MeasureQuick. Got some pretty cool stuff to show you today. We've been working almost a year on getting this refrigeration mode in. It was uh, quite complex um, and uh, got some really neat stuff. So I want to walk you through how this thing is designed. And then uh, this is in beta, so any feedback you guys could give us would be tremendously appreciated. And there's more features to add. We're actually working on the multi superheat mode right now, and we are getting the Sportland uh, smart tools connected in here. So you'll see a lot of updates, but I wanted to get what we had out, out so you guys can start to use it and give us some feedback on, uh, on the application and how it's used. So the way you enter it is in the upper left-hand corner uh, where the house is with a snowflake, that is the modes in there. So if you look down there now, you'll see refrigeration mode. You can select that mode and uh, it'll go in. You'll see some of the terminology will change right away. Uh, we got now our case temperature, design temperature difference for the case, our CTOA, CTOA which is condensing temp over ambient, and we've got our metering device type. If you scroll through to the bottom menus a little bit, you'll see that some of them are grayed out. And uh, like we have a grayed out return air wet bulb and dry bulb, and they're grayed because there's no target. So anywhere, if we don't have a target calculated, um, we're not gonna show uh, what the targets are until we get to that point. Now, if you hit the I button here, we'll go into system info. We, we put the target in by actually selecting the application. So you can see we have it set up for nominal tons of one, which I'm just gonna leave it there. Refrigerant 410A, which I'm gonna leave it there because I'm on an air conditioning system in the shop. I'm gonna select my application and you'll see right away, uh, we have all applications at the bottom. So you can see we've got beverage coolers, uh, different types of beer coolers, wine, floral, product, smoked meat, reach throughs, deli, seafood, uh, all the typical applications, plus we've got uh, class one through five of refrigeration. So there's quite a few different applications. If you want to add one in uh, to the quick list, like if I want to do wine coolers, I just hit the star on there and that's going to add it to the quick list. Now at the top, if I want to sort that, like let's say I primarily work on walk-in freezers, I can just hit the sort button and move it to the top and then that'll move that around. If maybe it work next on wine coolers, and I can just, like I said, move those wherever I want them to make it easy to sort my list the way that I'd want to see it. Then I just close that up. So all those lists, uh, they typically, on there, they have the case temperature and the design temperature difference of the evaporator, and then also uh, the, 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 the range of temperatures for the box and, and uh, humidities that we'd want to see for that application. Now we hit, um, let me make a selection here. I'll just select beverage cooler. And that's going to automatically put it in the case target temp and the design temperature difference. Now, if yours is different, you can change it, but these are the typical design temperature differences. Now down below that, you select your head pressure control. So let's say in this case, I've got fan cycling. When you select fan cycling, it's gonna automatically tell you uh, the minimum condensing temperature we wanna see, which is about 90. It's gonna tell you the corresponding pressure, and it's gonna give you the differential pressure on there. Again, all adjustable on those, and that uh, that 90 is based upon a, a cut in and cut out of uh, 276 to 342. And then our uh, CTOA is our condenser, condensing temp over ambient. So we can select the type of condenser we have and it automatically it's gonna make any adjustments to the, to the app as, as it needs to. Then a typical subcooling and superheat of 10 and 10. So when I hit submit there, what it's gonna do is it's gonna start setting up my target. So now you can see I have a 36 deg degree case if I tap on the, the pressure arrow, it's telling me that I want to get that design target down to about 82 pounds or 21 degree, uh, 21.5 degrees. And that's all based upon the 36.5 minus 15 would give me that 21 that I'm looking at on there. Uh, if I start scrolling through now and taking a look at my, my uh, the rest of the stuff here, you can see it's calculating my superheat, my subcooling, my liquid line temperature. Uh, it's also calculating my outdoor air, my approach. Approach is one of those that we may remove for refrigeration, but it is handy at full load where we can look at approach, uh, compression ratio, our discharge line temperature, return air, uh, dry bulb and wet bulb. Right now, those are both too high. A lot of guys want to look at humidities instead. On the gear now, we can take away the wet bulb indicator and switch that to RH or dew point. And so now when I go there, it's telling me it's got a 51% relative humidity, uh, which for the box temperature or the box humidity would be fine. 
Um, if we tap on that, it's telling us we want a box humidity. We're looking for between 60 and 75, so it's still a little bit low. When you look at wet bulb, you're looking at, at both um, temperature and humidity. When we look at humidity on its own, the humidity is low right now. So that's why that shifted a little bit. Supplier relative humidity is just, there's no target for that. We're just showing you what the supplier relative humidity is and then what the supplier dry bulb is because there's just not a lot of good information for temperature splits across evaporators. We got our change in enthalpy. And then here, this is pretty interesting. We have our temperature difference uh, for our evaporator and temperature difference for the condenser. So that allows you to see how much colder the condenser is than the return air and how much hotter the, excuse me, how much colder the evaporator is than the return air and how much hotter the condenser is than the outdoor air. So TDs are used a lot in refrigeration um, rather than splits across the evaporator because it's just really hard to get a good temperature split across those coils because the air uh, varies in temperature across the face of that supplier. So it just really depends on your application. If you have some of them, you can do it well, but ones with a, a prop type fan, well, I found it very, very hard to do. We got our dehumidification rate. We got our total sensible latent uh, cooling and sensible heat ratio. And then if we put electrical in, we can get EER, SEER, and COP and fan efficacy. Now, fan efficacy is just watts per CFM. We're, we left that in there because I thought it was interesting uh, as we get these higher efficiency um, fan motors. You know, those are getting phased in. Uh, the, we're spacing out all the uh, shaded pole stuff and going with the ECM type. I thought it might be interesting to look at uh, watts per CFM. So we left that in there, uh, take a look at that. We added in COP so you can get a coefficient of performance. And then EER and SEER uh, right now are just, they're there. They may end up being placeholders. We could eliminate them all together. And then it goes back to the weather conditions and back to the system ID. And that's where you get your, your models and serial numbers. We have this whole thing set up so you can do a refrigeration project also. So if you click on refrigeration and you hit continue, uh, you can add in your job site information. So we'll just go, uh, test here submit this job site is where we're going to grab this and move this over to the job site customer information measure quick oops let's fix that Two, and then hit submit, hit submit here, and then equipment. Um, now we want to tag and mark a piece of equipment. So typically, if we can either locate the vicinity where that piece of equipment's located or mark a specific condenser. In this case, here we'll just make this a package system and um, say it's a Hobart, and we'll just go test and test submit. You can take photos of that if you want to. This is our profile, which I already have set. So it's a beverage cooler um, with a case target temp of 36 and a half, design temperature difference, fan cycling controls. Uh, you'll notice also that sometimes, like if we hit submit here, our fan cycling, let me just show you this and measure quick while I'm thinking about it. Um, you'll notice that the fan cycling is um, uh, not in the, in the control schemes yet. Now let me just show you how that works real quick. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and um, I think the easiest way to do this is just go into the toolbox, deactivate the test of smart probes. And we're gonna hold that reading for a minute. So I'm just gonna restart the app and then uh, go in here and turn on the field piece probes. So now what I don't have is an outdoor temperature target. And I'm just gonna go to my outdoor readings just so I can show you this. So if my outdoor temperature, let's say is uh, 30 degrees and I hit submit, then I'm gonna get this wide target here uh, showing us where the where the condenser fan should cut in and cut out. If my if my outdoor measurement is let's say uh, 90 degrees, well then it's just going to track just like normal. So condenser fan controls don't come into play until we actually have the temperature in the right range. So all that's set up so it'll show you where the pressure should be, where it should cut in and cut out. Once we activate our smart probes here, it's just gonna override that reading in a second once that outdoor air reading comes in with uh, live data. And then uh, we'll get, uh, now it's on, on live data again. So back in that project here, uh, equipment profile, we, we did that, electrical information, condensing unit, we'll just say single 208-230, single 208-230, evaporator fan type, uh, 
we'll say is a PSC. Uh, we probably should add shaded pull in for that. And now that I'm thinking about it, hit submit and then measurements. Uh, we can make our electrical measurements, look at our performance calculations. It does our stability calculations just like before. We can view anything on the Measure Quick homepage uh, where you can look at all your readings, right? And again, we're way outside of ranges here because this is uh, number one on an air conditioning system, but number two on a, uh, you know, outside of the design range for a beverage cooler. But it gives the idea here. So if you guys could um, take a look at the refrigeration mode, give it some thorough testing, um, look at things closely. You know, we're, we did our, our best here with getting this first go around done. There's a ton of work that went into this, but uh, um, you know there, there still could be some bugs and things. I'm also working on some uh, diagnostics for this specifically. So right now the diagnostics we're using are for the air conditioning diagnostics. So there may be some things that pop up like duct leakage or things like that that you know aren't the problem on there. But at least uh, there's some some things first go around that you guys can use and test to see what you think. But I do have a full set of diagnostics are going to be based upon the evaporator condenser difference and the condenser uh, design temperature difference. So a lot to look at, a lot more still on the way, but it's a first start for refrigeration and I really hope you guys like it. Um, again, give me back some feedback, anything you got on the, on the bottom of the YouTube video here, and we'll try and get those features adjusted, added, whatever we got to do to make it work. All right, this is Jim Bergman for MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.